What's up, everybody? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. For this Tuesday, February 27th, 2024, I am your host, Russ Williams. I'm so glad you could be here. Ladies and gentlemen, Transition, I'm so glad you could be here today. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today, but you decided to be here with me. And I appreciate that. And more importantly, I appreciate you. So welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have an action-packed show once again for you. But before I start the show, I always like to state my intentions. And my intention is to give you the opportunity to laugh, smile, think, and engage in honest conversations about your life's transition. So that's what we do here on Transition Tuesdays. That is what we do when people come on board. I give you a shout out as well. We're going to continue that trend, my friends. All right. So let's get after it. Okay. So our first story today, you know, our first transitional story was Wendy Williams documentary film, documentary on Lifetime. Man, her documentary on Lifetime. I tell you, boy, Lifetime. How could you? Lifetime. Let's talk about the Lifetime. How could you let this happen? Man, let me just tell you something a little bit about this. And Wendy Williams, I don't know, you know, that could be my kinfolk. Same last name, you know, as she says all the time. Same last name, maybe same plantation. I heard I said that before, you know, but man, a couple of things, man. I, man, I was very uncomfortable watching this show. I was very uncomfortable watching this doc. I felt so bad for not only Wendy, but her family everybody associated with her, but I really felt bad for Wendy Williams with this documentary on Lifetime. Man, and then you had the producers saying, they said, the, the producers of Where Is Wendy Williams, that was the name of the documentary, they said, and I quote, if we knew, if we would have known Wendy had dementia, because she, she has now come out, she has um, not full-blown dementia, but uh, dementia, like a disease, very similar to what, Bruce Willis is going through, the actor is going through, but the the, uh, the producer says, if we would have known Wendy had dementia, no one would have rolled a camera. That's what they're saying. That's the first off. That's the first thing they're saying. And they also wanted to say, they didn't know Wendy had dementia while filming most scenes. Now, the key is most scenes, but they had to see it because I saw it and everybody else watching it, you know? the scenes that they were talking about. But so like most scenes, they wouldn't have did it if they knew. Man, what were they looking at? What were the directors looking at? Who greenlighted this? Man, from the producer's point of view, who who greenlighted this? And speaking of greenlighting and being on fire, I got Gina checking in on the check-in from North Carolina. What's going on, Sister Cuz? Welcome, welcome, welcome. As Gina says, she calls BS with the red flag. <laughs> talk to me more about that, Gina. I'm with you on that, but talk to me more about that. But welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So yeah, I call BS as well on Lifetime. This was crazy. This was absolutely crazy. You know, what were they looking at? They had to know something was going on while filming. Come on. Come on, no excuse. I know they're in the entertainment business and that is to entertain, but in the expense of Wendy Williams like that? Nah, not cool, not cool. And let me just stress something else as well. I don't know what was more disturbing. Actually, them, Lifetime, airing this documentary to make Wendy Williams look bad, that's what it looked like to me, or the spending habits of Wendy Williams' son, Kevin. I mean, I, 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 I got to talk about this because a lot of people are talking about it. I got to talk about this too. So if you haven't seen the doc, the, the son was saying, like him and his family, I guess it was his cousin who was up there on there talking, you know, the rest of his family because he lives in Miami. He reported, well, the, the cousin reported that the guy Kevin, her son, spends over 100 k on Uber Eats. Now, I don't know if this was a year or a month, but there's 100K is 100K on Uber Eats. There's no pots and pans rattling in that place. What is going on with that? Also, they talked about Kevin pays 80000 80 80K in rent. Now, is that a year or a month? I don't know. 80K for a 21, 22-year-old? It's crazy. And the last one that blew my mind, too, the Uber Eats blew my mind, okay? But the last one was 100K 
that was spent on his birthday party. I think it's his 21st birthday party, 18 to 21st birthday party. That's 120K you can't get back. 120K on a birthday? Crazy, crazy. Gina says, dementia has levels. Uh, she looks like she has Alzheimer's. Yeah, I believe I believe that too, yep. And I think it might be like they was talking about, like the son was talking about, it kind of might be induced because of alcoholism. You know, I think Wendy Williams is alcoholic. You know, she, she needs help. And she needed help, and she continues to need to need help. You know, man. Gina also say in in other news, is our Detroit family okay? Cause that house blowing up got NC look uh, news on lock. Whoa, talk to me a little bit about this, Gina. I'm not sure about what's going on with that. Okay. And Gina says the Uber Eats I can see. No, you can see that. Sister cuz, but not a hundred and thousand, not a hundred K. Now I know you cook now, right? I know you cook or people around you cook, but a hundred and K that's inexcusable. And a guy I can't inexcuse. This guy is the voice of the men's and women's team of Manhattan College, the Pick and Pop podcast and ESPN's own. I got my guy, Uncle Smoothie from Florida on the check-in. What's going on, Uncle Smoothie? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So yeah, guys, man, that that's that just blew my mind. I was out that 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 dollar amount blew my mind, crazy. And also other things I got to mention too. And if you guys haven't seen that, you get you get a chance to see this. They're gonna be airing this all the time on Lifetime. But again, I had problems with her manager. I felt bad for them. I wanted to come through the TV. Her manager, her publicist, all these people were exploiting her. Man, it's really hard to watch. You know, and now I'm seeing her guardianship, who has control of her monies at Wells Fargo, they're suing Lifetime the way they was portrayed. So you got this, man. This this thing is a big mess, a total big mess. And I really feel for Wendy Williams. I really feel for Wendy Williams. I hope they figure this out, man. And more importantly, it, it seemed like no one was really concerned about her health. They was just more concerned about her getting back to do a podcast. She was in no position to do a podcast or anything, you know? So... I guess hopefully they'll get back to taking care of Wendy Williams, the person first, before we think about her working and doing anything, you know, because she is a person first, man. Gina says, let's see, Gina, Gina says, um, he ordered Ruth Chris, uh, Jerry seafood or something for a gang of folks from far away. Yeah. But yeah, a hundred thousand, what hundred thousand racks worth? Nah, that's crazy. Gina. <laughs> And Gina says, back to Wendy, I know my dad can't sign or agree to anything, so who'd okayed it in her camp? You're, yeah, you got a point there, because keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, not only Wendy Williams was the executive producer of this documentary, and also she made her son the executive producer as well. So yeah, people signed off on this, people gave it a green light, man. <laughs> Gina says, how's Aunt May? Aunt May is doing great. We just went, she just had a checkup today. She had a great bill, of, um, clean bill of health. So Aunt May is doing well. Miss Williams, Miss May is doing well. <laughs> Gina says, I don't know these people on this TV. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I got you. Yeah, these people are crazy. And for speaking of my mom, my mom had the pleasure of going to see Wendy Williams, going to see her show back in the day. So, and my mom had a great time. She's a great fan of Wendy. And she was watching the documentary with me as well. We were both kind of, it was tough. It was a tough watch. So if you haven't got the chance to see it, I, I recommend you go check it out. It is a tough watch, but you can determine for yourself and what you thought about it, okay? So I, I advise everybody to do such that, okay? Now, hey, let's transition to this now. Let's transition to a couple of, couple more stories I have, okay? Let's transition to former NFL great involved in a fight at a Georgia youth football camp. Okay, if you have you guys haven't seen this on YouTube or um, uh, TMZ, it's all out there. Cam Newton. Cam Newton, famous quarterback for the, uh, you know, where he did his work was the um, Carolina Panthers, okay? The Superman, remember he, with the Superman all that? Well, Cam Newton was sucker punched, man, and grabbed by three people at a youth football camp before camp staffers and security stepped in to restore order. Now, this right here has, man, it's just, it, it just reeks of blatant disrespect. 
great disrespect. And I'm looking here and I'm seeing my guy. I got to shout out my guy, Mr. Steve Belton. My brother, welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Steven, I haven't seen you in a long time, brother. I'm glad you came on here. Man, I got great love and respect for you, brother. That's why I'm talking about this story. <laughs> well, welcome aboard, man. I, I welcome, man. Steven, welcome you, brother. Good hearing from you, my man. Let me continue on real quick, Jinjin. I'll get to your points, okay? So this whole thing with Cam Newton reaped the blatant disrespect, okay? That was the order of the day here, total. I mean, you got kids stepping to Cam Newton was disrespectful. I know in past videos, I know Cam, Cam maybe Cam might not have to go in these camps because every time something jumps off with Cam at these camps that he, that he conducts, you know? But just blatant disrespect. These kids think they can talk to this guy a certain way. They was calling him a bum. It's come, you know, you can't throw, you know, all type of stuff. Total disrespect. We can't have that. You got to respect your elders. Man, then you got the parents or the guardians of these kids. They were disrespectful as well. Like, where the heck were they? Did they order their kids to do this to Cam? If they were, that was blatantly disrespectful as well. Crazy. Absolutely. And Cam was in a no-win situation. If you've seen the video, guys, in no win situation. But he was flicking them off like flies. That's the best thing he had to do. Protect himself, obviously. That hat never came off, too. Shout out to Cam on that. I tell you that. But listen, man, but he's in a no situation, no win situation. Because if he hit one of those kids, again, he'll be sued. Okay? If he doesn't have these camps in the first place, you know, giving vital information to these campers, you know, these, these upcoming students, these upcoming kids who play in the quarterback position, you know, then he'll be labeled as a sellout. He's not giving back to his community. No win situation. But let me stress this too. Let me really stress this too. You don't see this kind of mess happening at the Manning camps, right? We don't see that at all. We never see anything like this. So again, man, and I'll tell you what, and I'm really, you know, this really hurts my heart to say this, but I'm going to have to say it. Okay, this is a knock on our community. This is a knock on our community to have something like this too. Something like this happened. We got to do better. This is a knock on our culture. This has to come to a stop. Because, again, you don't see this at the Manning camp. How many years they had that camp? You ever had one incident about that? A kid stepping to, to a former player? A guy who's helping them out? Coming back to his community to help them out? To give them vital information they can use on the playing ground, on the playing field? And this happens? Nah, can't happen. That cannot happen. That has to end now. That has to end now. So, <laughs> let's see. Gina says, these new kids are disrespectful AF. Absolutely. I agree. Go ahead and put some respect on these people's name. Ridiculous. I'm telling you. Cannot have that. We cannot have that. Gina says, I think Cam's camp said he was um, breaking up a fight amongst the kids. Yeah, that's what it looked like. He was breaking up a fight. And then they switched up on him. Yeah, because that one kid sucker punched him, which was crazy. What they thought was he was going to react and boom, lawsuit. Absolutely. Yep. That's why he did the right thing. Yep. He did the right thing. We got my guy Cliff from Philly on the check. And what's going on, Cliff? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As Cliff says, hey, family and friends, much love to you. And Gina goes on to say, Cam needs to up the charges because <laughs> those 200 to the 400 camps ain't allowing them, them in. Yep, maybe. I don't know. I don't know, but you don't see that in the Manning camp. That's all I'm saying. This is a knock to our culture as a people. We cannot have this. Cannot have this. Cannot have this. And that has to end now. That has to end now. And what was the security? Like the main security around camp, you know what I mean? Or what have you. Where's the main security? You know, what's going on? We can't have that. Can't have that to our giants. Can't do that. Can't do that. Especially the guys giving his time giving his time to do this. Nah, we can't have that, man. Just, nah. It was, now again, that was something painful to watch and look at. But again, yo, young kids, you're going to be more respectful right here. And parents, yo, what are we doing? We can't have that. We cannot have this going on, okay? Can't have that. But where was that security? And speaking of security, last story I got. Last story I got, guys, Okay. Talking about the NCAA basketball games, the court storming, court storming in the basketball court, okay? Should it end? 
Some people say this shit ain't, you know? And beginning is, listen, we got Deborah on the check-in. You made it, Deborah. Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessings to you. And thank you for the blessings for the Transition family. I appreciate you, Deborah. I'm glad you're here. Okay, court storming, NCAA, basketball, right? Now, I don't know if you guys just saw this recently. You had Duke going down to Wake Forest. Duke was the number 10 ranked team, I believe it was. So, you know, that's the interstate rivalry. So the fans, after they won, they stormed the court. I know Gina. Gina, you was probably on the court. I know you from that area, you know what I mean? So I know you probably stormed the court. I saw your pictures there too, you know, but they stormed the court. Now, truth be told, because a lot of times when these people storm the court, stuff happens. We saw recently Caitlin Clark got hit. I remember back in the days when um, University of Arizona had Jason Terry, and I know they stormed the court, and I remember he just welled over and punched somebody really quick. It was hard to see, but that happened. I mean, that's the chance you take when you storm the court. But again, in this case, the guy, uh, Filipowski, I believe his name is, from Duke, if you look at the video, you know, he hurt his leg, right? Yeah, because he was sticking out his leg trying to trip somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what happened. He tried to stick his leg out to trip somebody as they was going. As again, you know, he has the phone. And that's the difference between court storming back in the days. Because again, when I played over 30 years ago, yeah, when we played at Manhattan, when I played at Manhattan College and we won the game against Wisconsin Green Bay, all right, and NCAA, oh, no, NIT, right, on the court, on Jasper, Jaddy Gymnasium, Chris can vouch for that because Chris was there. They stormed the court, you know what I mean? But the difference now is, People are storming the courts, but they got their phone in their hands, phone in their hands and running and trying to run and stuff like that and tripping over people in the whole nine. So, but, you know, I, in my opinion, yeah, it can't come to an end. It's, it's, it's Americana. It's, you know, it's basketball. It's basketball legendary, you know, legendary, legendary, you know, you got to continue that. You got to continue doing that. You got to continue doing that. Right. And I got some solutions coming up for that too. <laughs> Gina says, court storming is trash, but they need better security. Yep. Filipowski gets on my nerves. It's dangerous for everybody. <laughs> now, I got you, Gina. I got you. And you know what? I was watching that game. And here's the deal. Because at the end of that game, I heard, and it, it was picked up on the microphone, because I think they were near, they were near the, the, uh, the color commentators and the play-by-play -play commentators. I can hear somebody saying, listen, when we win this game, we got to make sure security is on hand. Now, somebody said that, so they were prepared. Well, they weren't prepared, but they somebody said that. I can clearly hear that on the mic. Could definitely hear that on the mic. Chris also goes, Uncle Smoothie says, they still on the call when we beat LaSalle, too. That's right, Chris. That's right. That's right. That's right. There's no problems, no, no, no issues, right, Spool? That was a great time. Yep. Great time. So, yeah, that's the difference. But, again, I got two solutions for that, two solutions. The first one will be maybe a one-minute time time grace period, okay? With that one minute, start the clock, okay? And, again, just make sure you get the visiting team off of the court, back in the locker room, okay? Do away with the handshake, the customary, you know, um, handshake at the end. Heck, they don't do it, you know, when they, when they start on the court anyway, so... You know, that's not missed anyway. And these kids nowadays that I've noticed when I when I watch the games are, they don't even shake hands before the game. So kids, they shake hands after the game. So again, do that one minute time frame, okay? Clock goes down, keep the clock going, okay? That way that gets the visitors out of there. And then when the clock hits zero, have them storm the court and have the players on there. Definitely do that, right? So that's that's one. That's one way you can do it. And then the second way you can do it, <laughs> and the biggest way you can do it, the biggest solution is, hey, look, if you're a favorite team and you're playing on the road, don't lose the game. Don't lose the game. And you ever notice this, guys, too, If you're when you're watching these games? It is never the winning coach that's complaining about the court storming. Nah, it's always the losing coach, right? The, the winning coach, nah, that's cool with me. Nah, it's all good. I saw the coach from Purdue. He was talking about that. Yeah, when they lost. Well, you know, you know, it's all type of, yeah. Oh, man, we got an outlaw on it. You know, the coach from Duke, we got an outlaw. Nah, it's always the losing team. Hey, so the winning team, the team that's favorite, win the game, you won't have no court storm. won't be no issues. 
won't be no issues at all. <laughs> Gina says they didn't have the, the correct security. I get it. Those who love Duke love Duke. Some folks are big fans about the Wake fans storming, are mad about the Wake fans storming the court. Injury Filipowski in the process. Yep, it was foul. But I'm comparing it to a parent being accosted, hold on one second, accountable for what their child does in these, in these streets. <laughs> it just doesn't add up for me. Where you were concerned, uh, were, con were you this concerned when Philip when, um, when the guy from Duke Chip Bangkok's teeth? Nah, I don't want to say anything about that, right? Number five, that's right. As a diehard fan of both squads and a mom of two of college athletes, shit happens. <laughs> this is Gina. I love it, Gina. Shit happens, right? Let me just keep going. Where we at? Um, wow, well, I lost. Hold on a second. Um, oh, the buzzer, uh, the buzzer buzzed. Okay, time to move on and get your mind right for the next game. <laughs> Both squads better get right for Matt March Madness, cause the universe always circles the block. Mm. My mindset right now: <laughs> go Rams. <laughs> Men's basketball at w, WSSU Athletics. Ladies basketball in the building. We see red. I hey, I like that. I like that advertisement. I love it, Gene. I love it. And again, we got my guy Chris here. Uncle Smoozy in the building. I know Chris gonna be doing March Madness as well, too. So now nah, we gearing up for that. But nah, man, just just go about your business and win the games. We win the games. As a favorite team, you won't have you don't have to worry about no court storming. Just win the games. I know it's I know it's easier said than done, but again, that will prevent it. If you can't do that, again, one minute time frame, time on the clock. Get the get the guys off the team. Get, oh, you know, in the locker rooms, you'll shake hands later, send each other emails, whatever you do, <laughs> and then with text messages, and then you have the celebration, then everybody's happy. That's the solution. That's just my take on it. That's my take. <laughs> my guy Steve says, Coach from Duke has been involved in some fan storming when when they beat UNC. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yep. It happens. It happens. Yep. I don't know. It, it happens. It happens. You ain't going to stop it. It's a part of basketball law. You know, it's, it's the way it is. It's back in the days when I played and today. You ain't going to stop it. I see they're trying to have major fines, you know what I mean? That's that's not gonna be deterred. That like, you're gonna take the fun out the game. Nah, that's that's college basketball. We gotta keep that in. Gotta keep that in. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, transition army. If we were able to make you laugh, smile, and think during this broadcast, my good friends, you have accomplished something major today. So celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. You made it here today. I'm celebrating the victory that you guys are here today. I'm celebrating that fact. Let's get my theme music going. Here we go. Hey, hey, all right, perfect. Grab some water. So ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army. Hey, I wanna thank you guys for the bottom of my heart for you watching. Each and every Tuesday here on Transition Tuesdays, I appreciate you rocking with me each and every Tuesday. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Now, this show and our past shows, you can find on our YouTube channel, Transition Tuesday. So, when you go there, please like and subscribe, okay? I would greatly appreciate that, okay? Guys, you guys can follow me if you haven't done so already. Ready? You can follow me on Instagram at Russ Will Transitions. That's Russ Will Transitions with an S. You can also rock with me on, on TikTok. I'm on TikTok as well, okay? That's at Russ Williams, the number 11. So that's Russ Williams 11, okay, on TikTok, all right? Also, I want to give a major shout-out. Major shout-out to our corporate sponsor, Sweet Candy Cafe, home of, man, Southern Sweetness in downtown Lumberton, North Carolina. So after the show, make sure you go on site. www.sweetcandycafe.com www, <laughs> to order your confectionery goodies. And also, this weekend is big, okay, for Miss Sweetness and the folks at Sweet Candy Cafe because there's going to be an event called Rumba on the Lumber in Lumberton, North Carolina. If you can make it there, please do. If you can't, make sure you go online, purchase items there on the, on the site, okay? 
If you don't like candy, let's say you don't like candy, donate to somebody, okay? We got to keep these small businesses growing and keep going, okay? And you can make that happen by going to sweetcandycafe.com. All right, let's see what's going on here before we check out. <laughs> ah, Gina says, let's talk about my child getting a Black Excellence Award at Elon University next week. Okay, we'll do that, Gina. You got my word on that. We'll talk about that next week. All right, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Deborah also says, thank you, Russ. Appreciate you. Definitely appreciate you. Appreciate you too, Deborah. Thank you so much. So, Transition Army, as we say in party, happy transitioning. We'll speak to you soon. Take care, everybody. God bless.